It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us up in the South Bend studio is Jared Dees, here to talk about lesson planning in the classroom, specifically with a religious bend to it. Thanks for being here, Jared. Glad to be here. Thank you. The religionteacher.com is a bunch of resources that you have for those that are teaching the faith in schools or in Sunday school, CCD, things like that. What made you want to go into teaching originally? Yeah, that's a good question. So I guess it was a discernment process like everybody else when you're in college and you're not sure what you're going to do. And for me, it was a process of discerning whether I wanted to go into kind of a more of a, a youth ministry track or if I wanted to go into teaching. And I just felt a calling to, to education and really wanted to share the faith that, that I was really passionate about and share why I was passionate about it. And, and the thing that I think got me most excited early on, which is the learning all of the details, all the intricacies of the, the faith that we have, the mysteries that we have. And I, I just love being able to explain and share that with people. And uh, so that's what got me into teaching. I've been doing it for, for years now. So like 15 years now or so, I've been involved in uh, Catholic education, catechesis, and certainly helped out with all kinds of different ministries, like most other people who are involved in their parishes, I guess. So when you first started teaching, what did your classroom and your class material look like? So I started out in, first of all, I was in the Alliance for Catholic Education program at, at Notre Dame, which brought us into this area. So I taught in Pensacola, Florida for two years. I was teaching middle school religion and, and also middle school social studies. And the challenge for me was, and I had this, you know, the history textbooks and I had all kinds of resources to pull from. Then I had my religion books, which was, it was kind of meager. And this was, you know, the early days of the internet. So there wasn't a lot available online to, to use in class. There wasn't a Pinterest yet quite to help me find all kinds of creative ideas. And <laughs> and so I had to make up a, a lot of things on my own. And, and that was, just, it was a, certainly a, a pain point for me. And that's what led me to do what I'm doing now, which is share resources for religion teachers and, and catechists to help them, you know, find really practical, printable, playable resources to be able to use in class. Because, you know, it's that Sunday night, you're planning ahead for the week and you just need to have that one little resource that, that's going to help, you know, get through to the kids. And, and that's kind of the way I, I like to serve today. Well, and that idea of getting through to the kids, I think that's something you address in the book is that a lot of times our first go-to is getting them information and sharing information with them and then have them memorize it so they can regurgitate it and not have them really dive into what it means to be a follower of Christ, especially in religion class. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's one of those things where you know, you just almost assume that this is, you know, as catechesis, this is just like education, but really it's it's not. It's it's much more than that. And, you know, if, if we get a kid to, to say pass a test or memorize the Ten Commandments, you know, that's good, but that's only the first step. We want to make disciples, not theologians. We want to make them fall in love with Jesus. And that requires them to have some kind of an encounter with Christ, not just an education about who he is. And that first step is kind of your first chapter of the book, I guess. And you give a lot of really practical steps and ideas of how to share information and how to make it more memorable. Can you share a couple of those with us? Yeah, sure. I mean, so the idea of the, the book Christ in the Classroom is, is just, it's really inspired by Pope Benedict XVI's summary of Lexia Divina. He gave a pretty succinct process for that, that I have applied to teaching catechesis, that basically is just a way of forcing you to get beyond just the teaching of information, but getting into that encounter. And the first step, if you do Lexia Divina, which is the idea of sacred reading, reading the Bible in a spiritual way, the first step is, is kind of an objective step. You're just asking, what does the text say? Well, if you apply that to teaching anything, you, you want to make sure that the kids know the basic information about the teaching that we're introducing. So that certainly can be used by any teacher. Those strategies that we can pull from education and apply to the classroom. My favorite from the book, favorite that I've been sharing with um, teachers and catechists that I've been speaking to in different parts of the country this this year is an idea called scaffolding, which basically, you know, if you think of scaffolding on the side of a building, you're constructing this scaffolding on the side so that you can build the layers of the building. But once you've got the level or the floor finished, you move on to the next one and eventually you move, remove the scaffolding completely and the building stands on its own. Hmm. Well, that's basically the role that we have as an educator, and this goes for catechists, teachers, parents as well, is you want to be the scaffolding to support them, to help them learn 
information. And then eventually you can remove that scaffolding and they can remember it on their own. So there's all kinds of, of little tweaks and things. And this is just in general popular educational tactic strategies using, using things like songs or hand motions that are going to get children to use different parts of their brains to be able to make connections, you know, mnemonic devices to help them remember the basic information that they need to know. Because once you get that foundation, you can start to help them personalize and understand, you know, more personally how this connect connects to their lives. You know, I'm, I'm thinking Ten Commandments because I just taught this last night, but we can certainly have them memorize the Ten Commandments. We could think of a song to remember them. We can, you know, use hand motions to help them memorize it. You can think of a hand motion that goes along with each commandment, and then that's going to be easier for them to recall that information mm -hmm. in their brains because they're making connections that are stronger than just memorizing the text, if you will. And then you mentioned like you don't stop there, which might be our initial thought is like, that's where the classroom ends. I gave them the information, they passed the test and that was the goal. So how do we get beyond that? Maybe before we get to that, why do we fall into that trap in the first place? Yeah. And, and I, and I, again, even we're writing the book, even writing all these resources, I totally fell into that trap this week. I got finished planning the lesson and I realized, <laughs> oh, I didn't use any of these other steps because I was so excited about getting across the information. And if you're in the position of being a catechist or a teacher, you know, you, you have a textbook and you have all this stuff to teach. And even as a parent, it could be overwhelming. There's so much you want to get across. But you, you have to force yourself to slow down and really focus on the, the details and help internalize it and make personal connections to what we're getting across, that it's not just the information, it's also this encounter. And so it's a, I think it's something we all fall into. I think if you're working with RCIA, it's that you fall into that trap. If you're doing even a Bible study, you know, often you, you, in Bible studies fall into this trap where you just start debating almost what's in the footnotes. And you don't mm -hmm. slow down and have a conversation about why this relates to your life right now, today, and, and this week. So so it's just forcing yourself to get beyond just the information and remember that this is about a relationship, not just a test. This is about a relationship with God, and that has implications for the way that we live our life. We're talking with Jared Dees. The book is Christ in the Classroom, Lesson Planning for the Heart and Mind. And if you had to give the average religion, Sunday school, CCD, confirmation prep, whatever, you had to give the average class a grade. What would you give it? Well, I'm hesitant to do that because I know the people that are volunteering, they, they work really, really hard. And mm -hmm. and they're they're out there, they're searching for resources, they're volunteering their time. And, you know, at least for the catechists, they're not getting paid, but they're dedicating their time, their money to pay for resources, to buy extra materials sure. to use in class. And, and so they're really, really doing very well. I, I think there's just a few things that I made, certainly made mistakes doing early on that we can all learn from. And they're just kind of basic things. I mean, the, the biggest thing that, that I think that would, would absolutely change a classroom is just not to talk so much. And that's, again, one of those things where we, growing up, that's the way we were taught, right? We sit in a class quietly and you get lectured to for 45 minutes or so. And frankly, it's just not a great way of learning something. We want to challenge our young people to desire, search for answers themselves. So that requires planning activities that are going to get them to do more hands-on work as opposed to just sitting and listening. You know, one of the, the, the rate, the thing I like to use kind of an age to attention span ratio is you think about how old they are, and then you just basically assume that they only have an attention span equal to the number of minutes for their age. So okay. if you're teaching eight-year-olds, you know, if you speak any longer than eight minutes, they, they're lost. They're not right. going to listen to anything else that you say because you've been talking too long. So you have to break that up with some other activities and things that are going to get them to apply what they're listening to saying. And depending on how engaging your speaking is, <laughs> that might even be a little generous. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, when I hear about stories like St. John Chrysostom and those great preachers, I'm like, that would be wonderful, but I'm not him. So I'm going to make sure and break this up with some things that are going to get the kids creative and, and interested in learning. So one of the things I am kind of getting out of this book is a shift from information to conversion. Would that be an accurate way to describe it? Yeah, absolutely. And that gets uncomfortable. I mean, frankly, you, it, it requires to get a little personal with the way in which you're teaching the ideas. And that's what it's meant to do, right? I mean, Jesus wasn't just giving information. He was challenging them to change their lives. And and so we have to you know, give ourselves permission to do that, to, to enter into that territory. So is that possible or is that too high of a goal for a classroom setting? I think this, the simple thing that we can do is just 
remind ourselves not to focus on only the information, but to take that second step, which is just to have them think of things going on in their personal lives that's going to connect to the information that they're learning. So the step is meditation. And that you know, when you read the Bible, for example, you might hear this passage again and again and again, you know, dozens of times throughout your whole, whole life. But you can apply different life experiences to what you're hearing, what you're reading. And the same goes for any teachings that we're presenting to young people is, you know, how do we get them to personally connect to what we are teaching to them? And the third step, again, it's, it's a, um, you know, it does a lot of the work for us, but just including prayer in the class in a way that's not just checking it off as a beginning or an end thing, but but really doing it in a meaningful way. So, you know, how can you incorporate prayer that's going to be a learning activity as opposed to just something that we do? How can we think of a creative prayer experience that's going to challenge them to apply the information that we're presenting to them? And I think that application part, I'm an education major myself, and I always thought when I was trying to teach something, say it's a math problem or something like that, they might not see the application for why do I need to know this particular kind of math exercise or whatever. But if you can say, all right, here's a career that you might go into, and this is how they would use this. It's that application of it, even in a secular environment that makes it more engaging. Like now I can see why I need to know this. And in our faith, it seems like even all the more one obvious and all the more necessary to teach people how to apply the information to their lives. Yeah. And you know, the hack, if you will, that we have as Christian disciples, you know, we're called not just to be teachers, but witnesses. So we can make those personal connections ourselves. And again, it's just giving yourself permission. If, if I'm going to be presenting this information, let me be personal. Let me share with the class. If I'm teaching about reconciliation, let me share my experiences or challenges or, or joys of going to reconciliation. And if you want the kids to make the personal connections, it means for us making personal connections for them as well and how it relates to our lives. You know, why is learning about the Immaculate Conception valuable to me? How do I relate personally to the Immaculate Conception doctrine and then making that connection for the kids. So sharing stories about our own lives, sharing stories of the lives of the saints, for example, or even scripture stories, lives of, of famous people today or famous Catholics today that are going to be relatable, that can make it uh, more meaningful to the kids. Like you're saying, and just like math, what's the, per, what's the real world connection to why right. they might need to learn this later on in life? Well, and you break this down so simply with these five different steps, learn, meditate, pray, contemplate, act. And like you said, you kind of tie this in with Lectio Divina. It's really such a, it's a nice small book. It's got so much good information, practical information, and then how to apply this in your classroom. I highly recommend this for any Catholic school, obviously CCD confirmation, stuff like that. How would we apply this if we're not involved with teaching? I think if you are in a position where someone asks you or even challenges you about the faith, trying to explain a doctrine, just like we were talking about a moment ago, the idea of, of presenting not just the information or the definition or formula for what we believe, but sharing why you personally have been affected in some way by this idea, by this teaching, and showing or maybe even inviting them to make those personal connections as well, as opposed to, again, just the objective black and white explanation of what we believe. All right. Well, I want to get a copy of this for all of the teachers at our Catholic school. And I yeah, know this is going to help so many people. So where should we send people to get a copy of the book and also share where people can get more resources? I know you've got all kinds of stuff for people that are doing religious education. Yeah, thanks. Well, the book's called Christ in the Classroom. It's certainly available, you know, where books are sold, Amazon.com. It's published by Ave Maria Press, and they, of course, would have it available. If you can find out more about me, and, and there's 10 years worth of resources almost at thereligionteacher.com. It's got lesson plans, activities, you know, worksheets, practical things that you could use in class. And catechist, religion teachers, homeschooling families are using them with their kids and have a lot of success. All right. Again, it's thereligionteacher.com and the book is Christ in the Classroom Lesson Planning for the Heart and Mind Thank you so much Jared Dees for putting this together and sharing it with us Appreciate it Glad to be here Thanks so much for having me